All right. So hello, everyone. I am Kelsey Lemons, Senior Technical Marketing Manager here at VMware. And joining me today is my colleague. Sunny Nguyen, Senior Technical Marketing Engineer. And we want to thank our host, Michelle Clopton, Senior Product Marketing Manager, for giving us the opportunity to present Day 2 Essential Workflows in VMware Skyline Advisor Pro. And definitely, we want to thank you all for attending. Um, we have a lot of content to cover today, um, which we hope is going to spark some questions. And so with that being said, you know, make sure that you're using that Q&A option at the bottom of the screen there. And speaking of engagement, you know, we're going to be doing something special for our webinar and even our next one, right? You know, so we're going to be stopping periodically, right, to ask you about your success with Skyline. So put some thought into, you know, how the service has benefited you. And if you'd like to share, you know, you're going to get a pretty cool shirt. Uh, Michelle, what are you thinking? You know, we're going to maybe, what, set aside maybe, what, three shirts for this? Or can we afford that? Oh, I think we can. We have three <laughs> shirts set aside, and um, so we can we can unmute you um, if you want to tell us your story um, verbally, or you can um, type it into the chat. So either yeah. way, put some thought into that, and um, let's continue with the engagement. Right? You know, we've got some questions that we like to ask you all in order to facilitate. Um, today's discussion, right? So let's just go ahead and get that poll started. A um, couple questions. We definitely would like to know, you know, what your current level of support is, you know, like to know, obviously, if you're currently using Skyline, and if so, how many people on your team are doing it. Um, we'd like to know what your favorite feature, you know, we've been constantly improving the service, you know, releasing new features and findings basically on a monthly basis. And so we'd like to get an update there in terms of what your favorite features are. We definitely would like to know with Skyline being a proactive tool, if you have acted on any of its recommendations. Um, and if you're using um, any ticketing systems like JIRA, ServiceNow, or PagerDuty, um, we'd like to know where you're getting all your information about the service in terms of social media. Are you using LinkedIn, Twitter, what have you? So I'm gonna give you a moment here and take some time to fill out that poll. And Michelle, when we're done, if you can read those results, that'd be great. Absolutely. For those who are using following systems, right, um, beyond Jira and PagerDuty and ServiceNow, let us know because if it's something that we can showcase, hey, if you're going to use API, how's it going to integrate to there, it'll be a win for you and, and we get a chance to know more about our customer. And last but not least, um, these t-shirts are pretty cool. Even I don't have these t-shirts, so technically, nope. you get better off than <laughs> just to say. Very exclusive. I don't have one either, sorry. I don't think I have one either, and I ordered them. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got, yeah, we still have some um, responses coming in. Okay. Good so I'll deal. let people wrap those up here in the next few seconds. 10, 9. Oh, yeah, still a couple coming in. Good deal. I hope, though, you know, as, as we keep moving along, Kelsey, with the amount of activities that we do from a technology cert perspective, as well as an API perspective, um, we will win the, uh, you know, the, the most popular feature. <laughs> Hopefully. Nice. Okay. I think responses are starting to slow down. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. And let me go ahead and share the results. Good deal. Okay. All right. So um, for current VMware support level, we have um, most customers on production support followed closely by customer success 360. We've got some premieres there, a little bit of basics. Um, and are you currently using Skyline? So the majority of people are already using Skyline. Good deal. A um, few people are not. So for those of you who are, you'll learn some new tips and tricks today, hopefully. And um, for those of you who are not, you'll learn a lot more about Skyline. Um, how many people on your team are using Skyline? Uh, mostly one to five people. A uh, few PL people have greater than five. I actually like that number because we're going to be doing something today that we haven't done in a while. So we're going to be talking about how you can manage users and leverage groups. And so um, for those of you who have members large than five, you know, you're definitely going to want to check that section out. As a matter of fact, it's going to be one of the first essential workflows that we talk about. So that's good to see. Great. 
Okay, drum roll. What's your favorite Skyline feature? Oh, we've it's got a, a very close. Oh, wow. Yeah, Ed's wow. out. Operational summary dashboard is edging out um, the Skyline Insights report just slightly. And then also Log Assist is very popular upgrade recommendations. Um, we've got some people using the TAM Health Check report integration. And then some people already using the Skyline Insights API, which is great because it's relatively new. Have you acted on any of Skyline's proactive findings or recommendations? The vast majority have. Um, so they're already experiencing those benefits and some people have not. Um, which of the following systems do you use? Um, so many people are not using any of these that we listed. Several people using ServiceNow, Jira, a few people with PagerDuty. And then our last question, what social media tools do you use? Most people using LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, Reddit and Facebook pretty much tied a few people okay. on Instagram. And that's yeah. it. All right, on with the show. Um, no show MySpace page. option? Come on. <laughs> we'll come back to that, Blair, but I think you got a point there. That could be a, a, a use case for that. So we have to investigate that. So. So with that said, you know, here's our agenda. You know, we're going to be spending some time, you know, just for those of you who are new to the service, just giving a quick overview of the service. And then Sonny is going to discuss, you know, data privacy and security, as well as give some insight into like what's happening underneath the hood of Skyline, right? And then we're going to go into how you can essentially leverage Skyline to improve your essential workflows, including, like I said, how you can add and manage users. We're going to talk about ways where you can restore collective health and manage endpoints. We're going to talk about how you can improve your support resolution times with obviously log assist and as well as how you can maintain the stability and the resiliency of your um, environment with upgrade recommendations. And then most definitely with the API and things along those lines, we're gonna be talking about how you can leverage automation. Then we're gonna, you know, again, wrap up with the call to action before opening it up for some Q&A. And again, we're gonna be taking some breaks throughout it to give you an opportunity to share your, um, success with Skyline as well so that you can get these cool t-shirts that nobody on this team has. So, and again, I'm not angry. <laughs> so with that, um, let's just jump right in and talk about the service itself, right? You know, by basically just answering the question, you know, what exactly is Skyline for those of you who aren't familiar with it, right? And so in order to answer that question, I want to set some context about the overall support experience that I'm sure you can all relate to, right? You know, so here it goes, you know, as a customer, I'm sure you're all very familiar, right, with the traditional, that reactive support scenario, right? You know, you experience an issue in your environment, you open an SR at VMware, and then our tech support team troubleshoots and works with you to solve that issue. Well, with that being said, right, you know, Skyline is actually the next step in that process is actually a proactive support technology, meaning that it can actually help you avoid issues before they happen. So you don't even have the problem in the first place. Um, with that being said, you know, Skyline also helps resolve existing issues faster. So say, for example, if you've got a case open with us, you know, our tech support engineers can use Skyline to view your environment specific configurations. And then at that point, they can actually use data driven analytics to speed discovery and ultimately drive those faster resolution times. And Skyline's automated detection and proactive, you know, that remediation guidance, right? It actually helps strengthen your environments. And so with the servers, you can actually avoid IT downtime, and then you can reallocate that time to do more, quite frankly, more valuable work. Um, and here's one of the best parts about the service for those of you who aren't using it. You know, Skyline is available at no additional cost with your active production um, support or premier contracts. And I'm also very happy to say that Skyline is included with Success360 and Be Realized Cloud Universal subscriptions. And speaking of environment configuration, you know, Skyline supports all the products listed here. Um, and these capabilities, you know, that Skyline provides, you know, they're driving value to customers like yourself. And again, we're going to give you an opportunity to talk about the personal value that you've experienced. But we've been hearing that customers um, are saying that, you know, Skyline helps them avoid constantly being in that firefighting mode, right? You know, our customers are reducing very costly downtime, which quite frankly is often caused by misconfigurations. And again, that increased network reliability, it translates into less time fixing errors. And as you can see here from um, this recent industry report, you know, one hour of downtime, right? You know, one hour, you know, for an enterprise, average is around a half a million dollars. And 
customers and companies, right, who have strategically, you know, made that decision to, again, take that more proactive approach to support, you know, they're significantly reducing unplanned downtime, and we're talking hundreds of hours. And, you know, to date, you know, Skyline has helped over 12,000 plus customers identify nearly 90 million objects in their environments with potential issues, and our customers have proactively resolved more than 60% of those on their own. Um, and again, you know, when there are times where you may need to react. You know, we talked about Skyline being a proactive support, but again, there may be times where you may actually need to react to an issue that you didn't proactively resolve. You know, Skyline can support you here as well with our log assist feature, which is 17 times faster than the manual um, log upload and transfer processes, right? And when you do the math around that, you know, that actually translates into nearly a 100,000 hours saved for our customers. And if you've done the traditional log transfer process, right? I'm sure you can all relate to how slow that is. So the log assist feature removes that pain and Sun is going to be showing you that. And again, that feature again gives you again that very valuable time back to quite frankly do more meaningful work. So how does Skyline work to enable these benefits, right? Well, you got to do a couple things. You know, first you got to install and configure a lightweight appliance called the Skyline collector in your environment. And then once a collector is installed and configured to your endpoints, it starts to listen to start to collect product usage data. And then based on this data, right, you know, Skyline will perform a comprehensive analysis of your environmental details. And then at that point, you know, Skyline acts in a way to sort of provide, again, um, proactive findings and recommendations. And um, so let's take a look at the environment itself, right? You know, where when you log in, you're going to be greeted with a dashboard, which is sort of like the single pane of glass, right? Where everything that you literally need is at your fingertips. So I want to talk about all the great information that's available in that dashboard. And so basically the dashboard provides an overview of the total number of active findings. And active findings can be filtered by severity, category, and type. You even get an overview of what's currently trending in your environment. The dashboard also gives you the ability to see the health of your collectors. It also provides an overview of any open SRs in your organization. And then there's insight into the environment that Skyline is proactively monitoring as part of its operational overview and inventory summary. And this is where things get interesting because it reflects all the endpoints. And then this product also provides end of life guidance and health notifications. And then there's also dark theme. Um, Sonny, is there anything you want to add here around the actual dashboard in terms of that initial experience that customers agreed it with? Sure, sure, sure. So um, if you all have used the environment array, you know that, you know, the inventory and the findings are great. And if you go deep enough, you find a lot of stuff. The hope here, of course, is, is you know, we bubble up a lot of the needed essential information right off the bat. You know, to me, the most important pieces is, is, is for you to come in on a weekly basis, if not more often, and just take a look at your notification, right? Because because let's be honest, you, ha you have X amount of people within your team and you have Y amount of infrastructure you have to support. Sometimes if things are working, you don't even think about it. So when those kind of things bubble up where it's, oh, by the way, for example, vSphere 6.7 to vSphere 6.5 is end of life, you know, October 22, well, you've got X amount of months to work with your teams to get approval and change requests to start upgrading it before you become in a situation where it's still running, you have a problem, you put a ticket in to come to find out that it's not fully supported anymore, right? So, so once again, going back to what Kelsey said earlier on, trying to bubble up stuff so that way you can eliminate problems, A, before they occur, and B, losing time trying to fix the problems after the fact. It definitely speaks to the whole idea around maximizing your plan downtime. It gives you insight into when products are reaching their end of life cycle. And you know what, Sonny, I think at this point, maybe it's a good opportunity now to sort of open up the phone lines and see if there's any customers out there who can share their experience and the value that they've had with or had with the service. So let's see if there's anyone out there who's willing to either put something in chat or come off the mute and speak. Yeah, so I think um, if you'd like to, oh, we do have someone who'd like to speak. Okay, Cyril, mm -hmm. I'm going to unmute you. you should, let me see. Okay. Hi. Hi. Cyril, how you doing? Good morning. 
Uh, I'm doing good. How about you guys? Doing great. Uh, thank you for doing uh, this uh, webinar. It's really uh, interesting and uh, it gives us uh, a little bit more insight into uh, sky Skyline. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, uh, just wanted to tell uh, my little story about it. Um, uh, we, we are multiple uh, system administrators working with VMware, of course. And uh, so, so some of us uh, like to leave snapshots a little bit too long. And uh, ah. yeah, and uh, we had uh, one time uh, an issue where the uh, data store started to get really, really close to be uh, full. Maxed out, yeah. And yep. uh, Skyline was, was able to uh, warn us about the issue and we were able to react really quickly after that. So. It's a, it's, a, it's a small story. However, uh, we prevented uh, maybe a catastrophic event down the road, you know, blocking VMs and everything. So it was a uh, really uh, great way to have this tool handy. So that's great. You know, thanks for sharing yeah. that, Cyril. You know, and it's funny, you know, it's, we hear that a lot about the snapshot finding. As a matter of fact, that we hear about it so much that Sunny, our automation guru, has actually created a, um, a script in this Skyline Automation Toolkit. We'll be talking about that as well that actually allows you to sort of take that finding and recommendation that Skyline services, and then you can actually run scripts to delete snapshots. And so maybe if oh, there's time, right. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Fine. So we'll, we'll be giving out links to that. So thank you for sharing that. No so, problem. Thanks, yeah, Sarah. thanks, Thank Cyril. You. And if you want to um, just send um, to the panelists your um, email address, I'll make sure that I reach out and get your T-shirt to you. Okay, where do I, where, where, where do, I do that? Oh, um, in the chat. In the chat? Okay. Yeah, you can see um, if you click on hosts and panelists, you should be oh, able got to it. Got send, it. send it directly to the panelists. Yes. Great. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Cyril. One down. And again, Cyril, you have a T-shirt that I don't even have. So take a picture and send it to us. So, um, okay. <laughs> all right. So, you know, with that being said, right, in terms of like what's happening and in, in terms of like, you know, what Skyline does, you know, whenever we talk about how Skyline works, you know, we inevitably, you know, questions around security comes up. So, Sonny, do you care to lead the conversation around um, that topic, you know, before we go into the architecture of the service? Sure, sure, sure. So, the reality is this, is, is when you were folks who have already deployed Skyline, chances are you've gone through this whole entire scenario where not only you have questions, your manager has questions, your infrastructure community has questions, right? Likewise, uh, for those who are starting to, to consider and deploying Skyline, those are the kind of questions that you will bubble up before you even deploy. So just, just to give you a heads up, you know, um, what you see here actually will provide you 80%, if not more, of, of what you need to know. First and foremost, right, um, we are a part of the CEIP program, right? So, so in order for you to leverage Skyline, you have to, uh, you know, allow that. Like, in the past, when it comes to these here, you know, you get an option to opt in or opt out. For Skyline, you need to opt in before you can actually use this. Reason being is because we are collecting your data, right? Um, likewise, everything is encrypted from the collector that Kelsey mentioned earlier to your endpoint, endpoint being your vCenter, your Horizon, your vROPS, you name it, all the way back to VMware, right? All that is encrypted, right? Um, therefore, there's nothing that, that, that um, should be of concern to you when it comes to that kind of communications. However, if you do have more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to, to us, reach out to your TAMs or your Success360 SSMs, and they will help provide you insight on what's going on. Right. Just to let you know, not everyone in VMware has access to your data. Right. Those who have access are either engineers, uh, developers, uh, your support team, um, your TAMs, possibly, as well as your SAC 360s. Uh, reason being because, because you know, they need that in order to do their work. And in order for them to get access, right, they not only have to get their management approval, they also have to get, um, go through a lot of training to make sure that, you know, they understand what they're looking at and what they can use, okay? And, and this question comes up most often, which is, are we collecting your information, i.e., you know, your server names, your IP addresses and stuff like that? And the answer is yes. When, within 24 to 48 hours of, after deployment, 
you'll get a bunch of findings and recommendations among them as is, hey, here's the concerns that we see based on that particular version. Here are the hosts that are affecting it. Likewise, if, if there are NSX rules that, that um, bubbles up within Skyline, it'll say, oh, by the way, this particular host versus you know, that IP addresses versus this kind of configuration, all right? So that way, you know, you're not surprised that, oh, it, it's collecting, yes, it is, but, but for your benefits, right? Um, anything you ever have questions for, chances are uh, it's either, in, it, it's mostly in the FAQ. Now, there are certain questions that will come up that isn't in there. And if we hear about it, if Kelsey, Michelle, myself, if we hear about it enough, we actually insert that questions into the FAQ. So that way it helps other people asking the same exact question, right? Um, when it comes to collecting your data, there's always concern about, hey, what exactly are we collecting, right? So if you take a look at the data collection example link, you'll see for every single applications that we collect, the details, the data that it's collecting. Now these are sample data, of course, but, but I believe you get the gist of, of what we're really collecting. At the end of the day, version numbers, um, numbers. you know, configurations, state changes, right? So for example, um, if you've got, you know, this particular version that's susceptible to log4j, that kind of bubbles up, or your log disk is full, or, you know, your cert expire, that kind of thing, all right? Um, the third link, uh, onto your uh, right side, believe it or not, is pretty important because because the uh, Cloud Security Alliance has a document in there that we wrote, which is the CAIQ. It tells even more detail about you know your data privacy as well as your security, how we're protecting it, how we're backing it up, you know what kind of of uh, process we do to make sure that you know when new applications, when new features roll out, that we ensure your stability and everything else. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Sure. So that in itself is security, right? So now let's tie all this in by, by talking about the architecture, right? So for those who've deployed this, this looks very familiar as to you. For those who, who haven't, and it's kind of daunting, at the end of the day, what you're going to do is, is and I'll, I'll go um, down going up, okay? Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go into skyline.vmware.com and create yourself an org. Right? That org is going to be tied to your EA entitlement, which is your, your production, your basic, you know, it'll, it'll tie up to, to those. And then what you can do is, is, as Kelsey mentioned earlier on, you deploy an OVA within your environment. This, this OVA, this full-time OS, it looks and runs similar to what you see from a, you know, a VROX, a VRA, VRO, even vCenter. But, but it's actually much smaller because it only does one thing, which is talking to your endpoints that's to your right, Right, so, so from the VCF, vSAN to NSX to those features, right, to, to those um, applications, it then collects it within 20, 40, 40 hours. It then starts providing you the insights on what's going on. Next slide, please. Um, so, so that in it itself is the gist of how Skyline works. And, and that might sound a little bit daunting. So, so let, let me go a little bit more in depth, okay? So, so there's technically two components. There's the, the in-house piece, that, that is the collector, but let's talk about the SaaS product, right? The, the dashboard that Kelsey showed late, earlier on, it's actually the Skyline Advisor. That's the SaaS piece. That's the, the location where you view everything that your Skyline collector is doing, right? So within that, um, that's where you actually add in all of your accounts or your users. So earlier on, I saw that, you know, hey, majority of you are running or having at least five people within your environment yeah. Looking at this, the hope for us is, is, is you might actually want to do more, more being, hey, more people within your organization, more people in networking, storage, you name it. So that way they can see the same kind of problems you see and hopefully work together to solve the problem, right? So, so, so within this, this you know, Skyline Advisor Pro environment, reality is, is that's actually the cloud services that VMware has. And in there, you've got VROPS, VRA, you know, you have a lot of, you. you know, beyond what, what, you know, what you've seen within uh, um, your on-premise product. So the reasons why I'm, I'm bringing this out is, is, is as you grow more and more, it may make sense for you to start leveraging more of the uh, cloud services and, and with Skyline already being in it, you get more value that way. So as soon as, as, as you enable your organization, you then create yourself or deploy your, your collector. And this collector, as I said before, it's just a smaller machine that talks to everything in your environment, 
right? I've heard some people say, oh, I only care about collecting my, you know, doing the V center and I'm happy. And that's fine too. But in reality, if you talk and you collect multiple instances within your environment from your NSX horizon and beyond, um, later on, I'll talk about upgrade recommendations that, that, that makes it more valuable to you on tying all this in. So as soon as you do that, right, um, the collector will then talk to advisor and within 24 to 40 hours, it provides you information. So from this view, you get the gist of exactly what Skyline is really doing, right? Next slide. Now, what, what that also means, of course, is, is, is your Skyline collector, which is small and that you deployed in your environment, is actually very valuable. Reason being, and, and we'll go more in depth later on as well, but, but if that were to have a problem where it goes down, it's not talking back to VMware, and therefore you won't see anything within advisor. Likewise, if your endpoints aren't talking to your collector, once again, it just means that we're not, we're not seeing anything, therefore we're not providing any insight, right? And, and, and to keep everything stable, our goal is to give you as much insight as possible so you can figure out how to solve your problem and hopefully um, have less SRs, okay? Next slide. All right. And so with that, you know, thanks, Sonny. So let's just jump right into the meat of the webinar. We're going to talk about, excuse me, um, day two essential workflows. <clears throat> and so with that, right, you know, we're going to cover some best practices for, again, adding and managing users. And I think, again, this is going to be really, really important for teams that are over five. And, um, and then at that point, you know, we're going to, again, we're going to transition into collector health and endpoint management. Then after that, you know, Sunny is going to talk about, again, how you can use Log Assist to improve those support resolution times, as well as lead a discussion on how Skyline can help you, again, you know, maintain stability and resiliency in your environment with upgrade recommendations, um, followed by some recommendations on how you can leverage scripting, actually, to increase your productivity. You know, we just talked about um, the automated scripts that we have around um, snapshots and things like that. So we're going to be talking about automation and scripting as well. And so with that, let's just get into it, right? You know, we get a lot of questions around best practices, you know, on adding and managing users during our discussions. And so we inevitably, you know, we have to go back and talk about organization roles and service roles and things like that. And so with that, I want to just go back and just take a moment to revisit the architecture diagram, right, where we're going to focus specifically on users, you know, in a cloud organization with, again, access to those multiple services within it, right? And so these users, like Sonia talked about, you know, they have privileges granted to them based on the organization, as well as privileges to specific services that that organization offers, right? So we're talking about organization roles and we're talking about service roles, right? And from an organizational point of view, you know, members of an organization can be either members or owners. And then, you know, they have role-based access to the services within those organizations. And as you can see from this diagram, right, you know, this organization, you know, offers its members um, access to Skyline and VROPS Cloud. Um, and then again, like I said, these services have specific privileges. So let's break down organization and service roles. And so, you know, when it comes to organizational roles, right, as you can see, just by looking at this and just giving it a really quick glance, right? You know, the biggest difference between an organization owner and an organization member is that organization owners can add or remove users from that org, right? And then they can also, again, assign service role access, again, to products like Skyline and VROPS Cloud. Um, if you are, are a member, you know, the identity and access management feature will not be visible to you, you know, again, if you're not an organization owner. So if you're a member, you won't be able to see what I'm getting ready to show you. Uh, and then along those same lines, right, you know, once that organization owner has added access to the service, you know, to a service like Skyline for its members, these members can then have service specific privileges, you know, primarily the Skyline administrator and the Skyline user. Um, in terms of similarities, right, you know, both of these roles can um, view all the details on the dashboard, you know, they can view collected health and inventory details, they can view findings, hidden findings and upgrade recommendations, they can download reports like the OSRs if you're not on the latest version, um, and then they can also do things like initiate a log transfer using log assist. However, there are 
some differences that I think you should all be aware of. You know, the Skyline administrator also has some additional privileges. You know, they can add or deregister a collector to that cloud services organization. You know, they can receive email notifications when the collector root password is about to expire or when their health status changes from unhealthy, um, or maybe even that collector may require an upgrade. You'll get an email notification around that. Um, administrators can also link and unlink um, entitlement accounts to and from that cloud services organization, as well as enable um, the ability to basically view support requests raised by members on their teams. Um, there is a third role. Um, it's called the Skyline API user role. And this service role is um, will basically enable you know, anyone with this privilege to query Skyline data from outside the service. However, you know, in order to access anything within the advisor, you know, even the API tab within the service itself, you know, members with this permission should at least have the user role tagged on as well to be able to consume the service. And so, as you can see here, you know, adding members to your cloud organization is a pretty straightforward process. You know, all you got to do is go to your identity and access management and enter their email address. Um, you have the option to make this person an owner. And if you want them to have the ability to sup um, file support requests and use log assist, you know, you want to definitely make sure that you're doing things like giving them access to the support user role. And then you can specify, you know, if you want to give them access to the service, either as, again, um, as an admin or a user or even an API user, um, give them those privileges here. And, you know, since we're talking about tips and tricks, I'm going to go ahead and share one, right? You know, um, if after entering a, a user's email address, right, if that email address appears as green, that means that their member is already affiliated with an existing cloud service organization. Um, if the email address after you entered it is blue, uh, that means that, you know, they're not a member of any cloud services organization and then they would have to actually accept the invitation to join your organization. Um, all unaccepted invitations will appear under that pending invitations option where you can either um, have the option to resend or revoke the invitation. And another tip, since we're giving away tips and tricks here, um, um, you also may notice that as I'm giving someone permission that I can actually specify the duration of the service, whether it never expires or I can set it within a set time frame. Uh, this is a great tool if you're working with an external contractor, right? You know, maybe you don't want to do the API, you want Sunny to come in or as an API developer to come in. You can give someone like Sunny API user development and set them to however long your contract is, and you can set that duration there as well. Um, Sunny, is there anything you wanted to add here in terms of just that whole idea around just the process around adding users and specifying service roles? Nope, nope, you are spot on. Um, later on, uh, possibly in another uh, webinar, I'll even show you how to actually code that in as well. So you can actually add in yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Thank you for that sneak peek yesterday. That was pretty slick. So I'm looking forward to seeing that out in a while. So, and with that, right, you know, um, and, you know, speaking of API development, right, you know, Consider, you know, creating groups for each of Skyline service roles and assigning users to them, you know, based on the level of access that you want them to have, right? You know, groups are a great way to do broad sweeps of edit rights and privileges within Skyline as opposed to editing each of your individual members one at a time, right? And so in this scenario, right, I'm giving everyone with the API user role, you know, the ability to submit SRs as well as access the Skyline Advisor interface by giving them, again, like I said, that additional user privilege, right? And so, you know, and for those of you who indicated in the poll that you have teams greater than one person, you know, if you're planning on extending access to the service, you know, you may want to consider, you know, creating groups, again, based on um, admins, users, and API users. And so that way, again, you can make broad sweeps as opposed to doing individual edits on an individual level. Um, and with that, Sonny, just want to open it up to you and see if there's anything additional you wanted to add here. Nope. Everything here, you're spot on. Good deal. Good deal. And so um, with that, let's just keep it moving. Then we're going to take a break and give people some time to share some input about the benefits that Skyline is um, 
given them. And so earlier, you know, you, you heard Sonny talk about the importance of the collector, right? You know, it's basically the unsung hero of the service, right? So we're going to talk about um, ways to restore its health should it ever become um, compromised, if you will. And so let's just go right into it, right? And so again, I want to revisit the architecture diagram, you know, as um, Sonny mentioned, you know, the collector is actually the tool that delivers those proactive findings from the endpoints that it's monitoring, right? You know, so obviously the collector is a really, really sort of key component of the service. And it's very important that it stays in a healthy state, um, quite frankly, because anything less than that would not only impact, um, you know, Skyline's ability to, again, deliver those findings and recommendations that would um, keep the environments that you manage out of harm's way. But again, like Sonny said, it also impacts the ability to um, do things like use log assist, uh, which is a bad thing, right? If you actually encounter a problem that you need to react to. And so with that said, yeah, you know, here are basically the six states that your collector can have, you know, ranging from healthy to partially healthy to failing to collect data. Um, you may encounter a situation where it may say there's no products configured or that it's inactive or maybe even an unknown state. And so at the end of my demo, I'm going to provide a um, link to a troubleshooting guide um, that goes into detail on all their key characteristics and recommendations on how to restore them um, back to a healthy state. And so now for the demo, right, you know, so we're going to jump into the service and I'm going to check out the state of my collectors. And as you can see here, I've got three collectors that are monitoring my environment that consists of, you know, five V centers, 57 hosts, 60 VMs, 10 NSX objects. And, you know, you get the idea, right? And when I click on one of them to check the to check on their health, right? You know, I can see that they're either partially healthy or failing to collect data. Not good, right? So. I'm going to address the collector that is failing to collect data, you know, for my vCenter. So I'm going to remote desktop in and I'm going to do some investigating, right? And as I expand my inventory, you know, I see the culprit or rather it's not, it's what I don't see, right? You know, it seems that my collector was inadvertently removed. I can only speculate as to why, but perhaps it was moved to another vCenter or perhaps it was cloned and the original one was deleted, you know, but in any event, right, you know, I can resolve this by locating, you know, the parent data store in the folder, and then using its VMX file, you know, to properly add it back into inventory. And doing this is a simple process, right? You know, I just walk through the registration wizard, I give it a name, I associate it with the host, and then after I've confirmed my decisions, you know, I'm basically done, right? You know, at this point, you know, I can power it on, and this should enable the collector to communicate with the um, vCenter server. And with that, right, I'm going to turn my attention to the collector that is now registering as partially healthy. And again, I'm going to remote desktop in. And after a quick inspection, I noticed that the collector, you know, while available, doesn't seem to be responding. And so I'm going to reboot um, the guest OS since I have VMware tools installed. And after I reboot it, you know, I can see that the state has changed from available to basically, um, excuse me, powered on. And with that, right, you know, for the third collector, you know, I went through a similar process and I addressed that status. And so when I go back into Skyline now, I can see that everything is functioning properly again. And all of my collector statuses are now registering as healthy. And in terms of like that tooltip guide or the guide that I promised here, um, you know, I just want to point out that again, if your collector is going to a unhealthy state, you know, the actions that you should take, you know, again, while they may be very different from the ones that I took here for my demo, you know, because again, you know, remediation is all dependent on how your environments are configured. So be sure to check out this KB article here for more insight into how you can troubleshoot your issue. And if you're unable to, you know, return your collector to a healthy state after following um, the recommendations provided here, you know, just reach out to the Skyline community for help, your TAM. I mean, if you're a premier support customer, again, you can um, contact them for additional information as well. And with that, Michelle, I think it's another good time to see if there's another giveaway for anyone who wants a cool t-shirt that nobody on this team has. <laughs> I agree. We have two t-shirts. That's the first spot for you, Kelsey. I'll get you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one either, if it makes any difference. I'm just two having fun. <laughs> two t-shirts left, so if um, you want to raise your hand um, like Cyril did, or type something into the chat. 
We <laughs> will be happy to hear your mini success story and give you a t-shirt. Oh, we got someone, possibly. Not sure. Oh, I'm not sure. I saw something okay. pop up in chat, so. Okay. Okay. Well, we can always come back. So I want to. I want to make sure that all these shirts are are given away. So we come back. Um, Likewise, the other thing we, we want to hear is is from the customers, right? So, so we we want to know what 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 your experiences are. Oh, most definitely. And so. Again, Sonny, you know, you talked about endpoint, you know, when you showed that diagram, right, and the whole idea around um, the collector and the endpoints and, you know, uh, initially, you know, when Skyline first came to market, you know, we said, hey, give the service a try, you know, connect a couple of endpoints and test out the service, right, so that you can get a feel for like what the service does in terms of just um, delivering those proactive findings and recommendations. But what we found is that in order to get the most out of the service, you know, you should definitely connect all of these supported endpoints. And so with that, you know, let's talk about endpoint management within Skyline. And so, as you know, I said earlier, you know, Skyline supports several products. You know, we've heard from customers who have said though, that while they like the fact, obviously that we're continually, you know, adding more products, you know, to the service to monitor, right? You know, the process of adding and configuring them every time we add a new supported process, product could be um, time consuming, tedious, and perhaps prone to error because you're doing it manually, right? And so in response to that, we've introduced a feature known as bulk product operations. Um, and so let's check out, you know, for the demo. And so for some context, right, you know, I'm going to um, show what it's like to manually add endpoints, you know, to the products that Skyline supports, right? And as I go through all the configurations for vCenter, you know, NSX, V and T and Horizon, uh, v Realize Operations, VMware Cloud Foundation, you know, you see that I have to manually add all the fully qualified domain names or IP addresses, usernames and passwords for each of them, right? And each, this in and of itself may not be a time sink if you've got a few products, but if you've got a lot, this could be a big problem in terms of time sink. And so this is where we've introduced um, both product operations. And all I got to do now is just download a template, fill it out, drag and drop that into my environment. And when I drag and drop that CSV into my environment so that everything can be verified. I can complete the process and I've manually have added all of these endpoints um, just by doing a single drag and drop through that. So it's a very, very fast and efficient way to add multiple endpoints. Um, in this particular scenario, um, I'm showing you how you can create endpoint connections, but you can also use this same tool to change the field from um, create to either update. And if you want to delete endpoints, you can also use the same method as well. Um, Sonia, is there anything you wanted to add here around this? Actually, I was going to mention that because earlier on, Andy, um, Andy T as well as Blair were talking about this, right? And, and so, it's, as you said, it's great for when you first build it out. But in reality, it is if you've built up the Skyline environment and you've had X amount of endpoints, and, and like Blair mentioned earlier on, if you have a password change, if you have account yeah. switch out, this is your opportunity to update that without you know removing and adding and, and, and doing manual tasks. You can actually just do it across the board. And you can do both, right? Like you said, you could do the ads as well as the modify. Yep, the update and the delete as well. Most definitely. Thanks and for last that. Last but not least, the great thing about that is, is then you save off that Excel spreadsheet, right? Um, yep. You delete all the passwords, of course, right? Yes. But at least now you've got, you know, your listing of all of your endpoints. So therefore, if at a later date, if God forbid, um, you know, your collector blew up, you can actually just start deploying that all over again, you know, with, with the current configuration. Deal. Thanks, Sonny. And with that side, I'm going to turn it over to you, man, so that you can talk about all the great things that we can do around improving um, support resolution times. Sure, sure, sure. Um, next slide, please. So, so as, as you all know, right, I mean, the biggest success that we had with, with Skyline was Log Assist. And, and so here's the reality. You all have done this in the past. I know I've done this in the past. You would create a support bundle, pull it down to your desktop, however long that takes, transfer it to an FTP site, blind, by the way, so you have no idea if it 
you know that it landed up there, but you don't know if it landed um, and it's corrupted or not, right? And, and, and so within Skyline, there is this Laga says portion. Those who have used it, please um, don't hesitate to, to, to chime in after you know my little speech um, to tell what your experiences are. But but honestly, it should be night and day, right? So so I've got some scenarios where next slide where where I would do a support bundle that would take about a week to process being that, that because because I was in the East Coast, the servers in the West Coast, it took me time because I had to do downloads during off hours and stuff like that. And then back and forth here, you get to see everything, right? So, so as we mentioned earlier, your skyline is tied to your entitlement. So every time you create a support request in your entitlement, it shows up here in skyline. You can then highlight, you know, whichever um, support request ticket that you're dealing with. Go next, select the vCenter, ESX, NSX, you name it, and then just go through and voila, it just goes on its merry way. The huge difference here is, is you're not talking about data center to your desktop. You're talking about data center to an OVA that sits in your data center, back to VMware. So, so it never left the data center other than going to VMware, which in essence should be much faster than, than the old traditional way. Now, what's really nice is, is you know, and there are situations where you send a support bundle and, and support engineer says, oh, by the way, there's a lot of great info here, but we're still missing some stuff. Can you give me additional bundles, right? So what you'll see next is, is this log assist uh, transfer request. And, and when they ask for it, you have one of two options. You can either reject or approve. And if it's something that, you know, hey, it, it, it's, it's, it's a pressing matter, they keep asking for more log requests, just do the auto approve for that particular scenario. That means that, you know, uh, support engineers will keep pulling till, till they get what they need. Last but not least, that there's no more surprise, right? So, so, so when you do it, you take a look into the log libraries and you should be able to see that, oh, by the way, that bundle was successfully uploaded. You know, oh, it failed. Perhaps I should pull another log bundle and send it up that way. So, so once again, the goal here is, is, is it gives you more and more visibility into the log bundle process. Therefore, the gap of time that it takes between you pulling down, you setting it up, support engineer seeing it, it should be fairly small in comparison, which will A, free up your time to deal with other matters and B, get you faster resolution because, you know, there's no more delays from that perspective. Okay, so I've gone really fast when it comes to, um, to that. If there's any questions when it comes to log assist, um, if you wanna chime up, um, raise your hand. If you wanna text it into the, the chat window, feel free to do that. Because if there are concerns, let's, let's bring them out so we can just you know, get you on your merry way, deploying Skyline and being better. So let's talk about um, environment stability, right? Here's the deal, right? When, when it comes to Skyline, our goal is to bubble up all of these concerns. It could be security concerns, it could be anything, but ultimately these concerns are, are what we want you to enact on, right? So, so, so when you take a look into your upgrades and finding, next slide, you're gonna find out, hey, there's a slew of them, right? But in reality, what happens is, you know, there's one to many, one problem to many hosts, and that, that's a big win. The concern you and all you all have, of course, between the one to many and many to many is, is there are upgrades involved, there are changes involved. And, and you, as I said earlier, you have X amount of people, a lot amount of work. Every time you do an upgrade or a change, there's always a problem. The possibility is that you may break something and actually cause more work for you in the future, right? And some folks, sometimes it's, it's hey, I've got 60% of my environment. It's pretty locked down. It's pretty good. Is that good enough? Uh, next slide. The reality is it's not. It's not. Reason being is because next slide, what you're going to see is that, hey, by the way, um, you're not in a secure posture because we recommend security, but you never got a chance to do it. Likewise, you're, yeah, the chance of you having stability problem is high because what some of the findings are, oh, by the way, you're running this. It, here's the kind of problems that you have. You know, um, you should fix it. You might not have that problem now, but you should fix it, right? So, so last but not least, everything that we've mentioned so far, the whole goal is to bubble all this up so you can fix the problem before you actually have a catastrophe, right? So, so 
Earlier on, Kelsey mentioned, hey, it's going to cost you X amount of money to solve your problem. But in reality, it's going to cause you that much more headache within your work schedule. Imagine you could have spent today working on an upgrade plan for Horizon. Instead, you're troubleshooting for the next week on, on why, you know, VCN and NSX and, and ESX are, are, are problematic, right? So next slide. You've heard already me mentioning about, you know, the findings and recommendations when it comes from an active finding of one to many. But here, let's take a look at many to many, right? So, so, so I know that every one of you have to worry about an upgrade of vSphere, an upgrade of Horizon. And, and chances are you might just say, hey, for this year, we worry about Horizon. For next year, we worry about ESX, right? And here, what you see here within Skyline is this, oh, by the way, you're running 6.5, by the way. By October 22, I'm hoping that you'd be on 7, because if not, if you do have problems, there will be bigger problems. But, but let's, let's just imagine that, you know, hey, 6.5 and 6.7 is still supported for the long term. If you're running 6.5, here it's telling you, oh, by the way, if you're going to upgrade to 6.5, update 3, here are the amount of findings that you're going to eliminate. Likewise, if you're going to upgrade the same environment to 6.7, here's what you're going to you know, eliminate. So, so that many to many, right? So this one activity is going to eliminate 20 something findings, right? That I think is, is a huge win. Therefore, the kind of activities that you do is going to be less. When you click into the you know, interrupt section, what you're going to see is, oh, here are all the boxes that are affected. Here are all of the um, findings that are tied to it. And here are some of the potential problems that you have. It may not be a big problem. Like, for example, if you're going to upgrade to 6.7, hey, it's not going to connect to your cluster that's running 7. Okay, not a big deal. You're not going to tie that to that. Likewise, it's not going to talk to the, you know, the other VCN environment. So it just kind of bubbles up these kind of, of, of info. So that way, maybe that is not a problem. But if what happens if you're running NSXV or NSXT and it's not tying together, what that allows you to do, of course, is now you worry about, hey, maybe I should upgrade these other pieces to make sure the interrupt matrix matches with what I have. And therefore, when I upgrade VC or when I upgrade ESX and vCenter, I'm not going to have a problem. Right? Next slide. So, um, Kelsey, you want me to talk about automation as well, or, or, or you want to? Yeah, just go ahead and take it. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So, um, so I've talked about log assist. I've talked about, um, you know, upgrade recommendation. Let's talk about scripting, right? So, so as you see, when it comes to all the findings, I mean, there's a lot of findings, but then there's a lot of affected objects within the findings. So here's the reality. Our plan, our goal is always to bubble these up so you can see the problem, identify the problem, identify the fix, and figure out how to make the fix best fit to you and your group. In some situation, because it's a small amount, you could probably just go in and just click through and solve the problem. But can you imagine, next slide, if, if, if you know, you've got one problem, one finding that is affecting hundreds of hosts, right? So, so the concerns I always hear when it comes to folks who aren't comfortable scripting is, is, oh, I'm not an expert. Oh, it's going to be complex. Oh, I'm going to break something. I'm more comfortable with GUI. And I get that. But I would have to say within the last decade, when it comes to PowerShell and everything else, the community has stood up and said, by the way, folks, if you have NTP prompt, if you have, sys you know, if you have advanced um, server settings, here's the script to do it. And all you do is you just change the host that you want to tie to and away you go, right? What I'm getting at here, next slide, is, you know, start adopting and start growing into coding. Reason being is because 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 uh, if you just keep letting go through, if you do enough of these, if, if you have 100 hosts that you're going to do, the chance of you doing every single host right, right may not always be the case. You may miss one or two steps. You may type something different. Voila, you just created a NSR for that particular problem versus a script will just go through and change everything the way it should every single time. By doing that, instead of taking, let's say, for example, uh, five minutes, three minutes to, to do an NTP change times 100 hosts, that script could have ran through within three minutes, four minutes, and be done with everything. And then you just worry about the next problem. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, hey, this is the be all and all, and you just wholeheartedly run everything you want. 
do test it out in a dev environment. Make sure you're comfortable with what the code does before you do it live. Okay. All right, next slide. All right. Um, next. This is so the NTP can, one? I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so as you can see, this is an example of, of, of what it looks like, right? You see the NTP, um, you know, recommendations. You take a look into the KB articles, right? You can export these findings. And, and in some cases, you may need to put it into, um, you know, your Slack environment for your other team members to see. You may put it into a ticket system like PagerDuty, Jira, or, or ServiceNow. So that way, everything is all accounted for. Right, And so what you do is you go in and you make the change. As you can see, you're right. It's really not that hard if you do it manually, right? But in a few more seconds, you will see, you know, us showing you how you can actually run a code to make that change even faster, All right? If you're comfortable with that and you're comfortable with that code, what you can do is maybe you can grow to bigger code, to better code. Um, later on, I'll, I'll show you my fling. And all I did, honestly, was to take these sample codes and put it into one place, right? And, and the goal here, of course, is, is for anyone who's not comfortable with coding, you can still see what's going on. You can still test it in a dev environment to make sure it works. And if you're comfortable enough, then you take it to the next step and, and you know, doing it to a live environment, possibly a, a live, you know, lab environment before you do it to a prod, but ultimately get you more and more comfortable to the point to where, hey, you may actually write your own code. You may even share it to the community as well. And, and from that standpoint is, is, hey, from a operational perspective is you just reduce the amount of, but you didn't reduce the amount of work. The amount of work you have is still there. You just reduce the amount of time it takes you to do that work so you can do other things. And last but not least, you're sharing to the community that, hey, you are you know the hero within the community to help them with their work as well, right? Yeah. Next slide. And with that, Sonny, maybe open it up to see if there's anyone else who would like to share their success oh, with Skyline. Yeah, actually, while you were presenting, we had two people share. Yes. They won the last two t-shirts. Um, so we've, <laughs> we had um, Jesse and then uh, Andy yes. V. We have two Andys on. Um, oh, so that's great. Which is, oh, so they've already won. Okay, good deal. Okay, so um, should we continue, Michelle, and just go ahead and wrap this up? Or are we, yeah, I know we're running yeah, let's, a little bit. Let's okay, do it. good deal, mm -hmm. good deal. All right, so Sonny, awesome. Thanks for that, um, the automation bit. And so what I want to do now is I just want to go ahead and just talk about, you know, next steps here, right? So for everybody in the audience, if you're not using it, go ahead and get started today. You know, you can just go to the Getting Started link here. You can install Skyline. Um, you can visit all the URLs that we've got in this presentation. We're going to make sure that this is available for anyone who wants it. Um, if you're using Skyline, you know, if you're not already, check out that free v Realize Operations Cloud um, service so you can take that full advantage of the unified support and management experience that these two products provide. We can do, we've done some um, webinars about this in the past, and we'll do more in the future in terms of how these two products, again, work together to unify support and management. Um, I also should mention that, you know, we've got a moderated com community, so just make sure that you're checking that out to get answers to your technical questions. Um, also, Earlier, you know, we talked about the API. Uh, we want to make sure that you, if you're interested, you know, check out and test the automation example that Sunny demonstrated. So I highly recommend that you download the Skyline Automation Toolkit that, again, was created by our automation guru, Sunny. Um, it allows you to do a lot of things. So um, as you can see here, there's a couple of components. You got a, con uh, a fixer package that um, reviews um, advisor CSV exports, and then it actually will help you implement remediation next steps. You got a com package that will um, basically send findings to Slack, Jira and PagerDuty. So for all of you who took advantage of that poll and said that you're using it, you definitely want to check out um, that package. And then we've got the helper script that basically makes sure that you've got proper connections between your endpoints and the collector. And then there's a Docker um, package that basically um, builds additional infrastructure, right, to sort of help support um, those findings and recommendations. Um, as well. And so for more information, make sure that you're going to that URL listed here. I'm sure by now, probably someone has probably put it in the chat as well. And then last but not least, um, 
if you haven't already done so, you know, be sure to get certified using the, um, um, if you're already using the service, right? You know, we've got a Skyline Advisor Pro Technologist badge that um, basically says, hey, I know what I'm doing with Skyline. I'm able to support, manage, and plan environments, you know, by using Skyline. And so um, if you get this badge, you know, you can put it on LinkedIn and Facebook. And um, Blair, we're going to work on the MySpace link um but <laughs> thanks <laughs> and then you know my link to yeah. my geosities website yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll make sure that we got that in there and so it's six um modules in the course you know we go through things like installation and configuration essential workflows that we've demonstrated here so you've already got one sixth of it done already um api and automation as well as security and even it's integrates with vRealize operations and so with that i know we went a little bit over but we want to thank everybody for attending we want to congratulate the winners of the t-shirts again that no one on this team has and um looking forward to seeing you in our next webinar next month by the way, what Kelsey didn't mention is if you go through the technologist course, for those who aren't comfortable, will be comfortable. For those who are comfortable, will get the cert. Last but not least, within the oh. program, there are three more drawings for more t-shirts. This is Once true. Again, this is true. T-shirts that we don't have. And jackets, too. You actually and get jackets. jackets for this. And I don't have that a jacket true. either. Yeah. And it's free. And the course is free as well. So with that, have a good one.